ladies and gentlemen, I give you... I don't know who this guy is. Nobody does. He calls, he goes by the name George Santos. He used to go by the name George DeVolder Santos. And before that, he went by the name George DeVolder, which is a very interesting name. He is a Brazilian Catholic Jew uh, who graduated from uh, all universities and no universities. His mother both died on 9-11 and months later um, and maybe years later. Um, we don't, there's so many details but according to Newsmax, if this was if this guy was a Democrat, we just let it slide. Now, I got to say right out of the gate, he kind of has a point. I think it's one of the reasons why Democrats didn't attack him because he's gay and uh, he has a Hispanic last name. And Democrats have a, you know, a, a preconceived notion about marginalized communities that we give them a wide berth to do their thing. And if somebody says they're gay or they're uh, Hispanic or they're black, they have black roots or they're Jewish or whatever they're, if they make up an, an identity for themselves, we're not going to necessarily go, eh, hang on a second, are you really black? Like it gets weird. So um, even, even the, uh, when Biden, you know, said the, um, you're not really black thing, like uh, to Charlotte, I think it was Charlemagne the God or whatever, which fuck man. If you're, if you're talking to a dude with a name like that, all bets are off. That's just fucking ridiculous. Unless he's a wrestler. <laughs> That's really what you call yourself? Jesus Christ. This is fucking weird. Um, so anyway, yeah, you're a modish. <laughs> he's gayish, right? But the idea is that Democrats are like, all right, he's gay. And I mean, it's good that he's getting into politics, I guess. I don't know. Like, it's hard to run against him as a Democrat in some ways. So they didn't really push. They just didn't. Um... Whereas if he was a Democrat and he'd been lying about all this stuff, we have others to choose from. So we, I, I don't, I think he would have get, gotten called out during the primary season. Not as a Republican, though. Congressman elect George Santos is facing a slew of accusation this. <clears throat> no, a slew of realizations. He wasn't accused. It's fucking true. <laughs> he made it up. He called himself a proud Jew. He's not Jewish. Shut the fuck up. He didn't graduate from where he said he graduated from. His mother didn't die on 9-11. Like, these aren't accusations of fabrications. It's true. He fabricated these things, and he's accusing other people of, I don't know, bludgeoning him with the truth. This week, uh, alleging that he fabricated large segments of his resume. Yeah, if it, it's just small segments would have been fine. Misled voters about his faith and family. During his campaign, Santos claimed to have graduated from Baruch College and NYU. And, and? Either institution, however, has found any records of him attending. San well, then that would be a, uh, that'd be a big red flag for me. How, did they have, uh, on the year that he allegedly graduated, and I'm just, follow me on this, did everyone else get a diploma? Did, did everyone else who went to that school um, actually show up for classes, pay tuition, possibly even stay in dorms and end up with credits. Did that, did that actually occur? Well then. All right. Santos has also been called out by the Jewish community for falsely claiming to be a part of that faith. Okay. By the way, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> I'm not uh, a proud Jew. I would be if I was, I suppose, but I'm not. And I called it out. You don't have to be Jewish to go, that fucker lied. It's not like Jews are the only ones that care that this asshole was pretending to be Jewish. Right? Like, I, you don't have to be black to think Rachel Dolezal is fucking awful, do you? Is that the standard? Is that, what, is that the Republican standard? You guys know who Rachel Dolezal is, right? She's the woman who, the, the, the white lady who pretended to be black so that she could head the NAACP in Seattle. Which again, if you want to know how somebody like George Santos can lie his way into office this way, just look at Rachel Dolezal. Because there's a line as far as questioning someone's identity that Democrats just tend not to do. If you're on the liberal side of things, you just let people call themselves whatever the fuck they want to call themselves until they cross some sort of awful fucking line, right? 
and it, like Rachel Dolezal did, which was take a job at the NAACP from, oh, I don't know, an actual black person, which is a little, it's fucked up, I would say, is the phrase I did comes to mind for me. And in this particular case, his joke about, well, I, I didn't say I was, I said I was Jewish and I would joke about it. And, but, uh, and then we find out he wrote a letter to this like Jewish committee that he was fundraising from and trying to get votes from calling himself a proud Jew, which is far uh, past the line of going, I always kid around being Jewish, like I'm jew -y, I'm Jew-like. The 34-year-old has since admitted to lying about his heritage, education, and past jobs while campaigning. Are we sure about his height? Painting. Santos is now <coughs> facing potential investigations by the House Ethics Committee and the... Weird. We're still going to have one of those if the Republicans take over? Don't they scuttle it every time they take over? Nassau County District Attorney's Office. With us now, Jeffrey Lord served as an advisor in the Reagan White House and is a... <laughs> Two dipshits who will uh, run interference for this fuck. Contributing editor for the American Spectator, Mark Rudolph is a branding advisor. By the way, this is the same guy who was defending Trump's uh, taxes before they came out because he's... He just knows how to work it. There any Newsmax columnist. Great to have you both, and thanks for coming on today. Jeff, let me start with you. Uh, how bad is this for George Santos as an individual, as a future congressman, and then overall for the GOP party? Well, I think it's bad. The GOP stands for Grand Old Party. You just said GOP party. Um, that's like when chips... The television show had a sequel called Chips Patrol. Chips comes from California Highway Patrol. So the sequel was California Highway Patrol Patrol. It was dumb. Same problem here. I'll move on. Bad for him eventually here. I, I don't think he's going to be out of there before they before January 3rd when they have to vote for speaker. I <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Because McCarthy thinks he can count on him for his vote and then dust him. That's ethical. I think he will be present and accounted for. Yes, ATM machine. <laughs> but one of the interesting things I think about this, and my, and my my colleague Scott McKay at the American Spectator has written about it this morning. Uh huh. This is going to be good. Is what this says about the media in this sense? He told the right woke lies, if you will, and so nobody bothered to check him. F hey, dude, it's your fucking party. There was no particular reason for uh, for even Democrats to question those elements of his identity. Perhaps I would say some of the did you actually work for Goldman Sachs shit, but since that wouldn't be considered a plus in Democratic circles and it would in Republican circles, it would just kind of reinforce why they would vote for him in the first place. If he says yes, more Republicans will vote for him. If he says no, maybe there's a chance that people go like, oh, I'll vote for an, a different guy and, I'll, you know, an independent who's maybe, you know, center left or center right might drift his way because he's gay and pudgy and therefore he's different. And so maybe we'll give this a try. And it, he didn't really work for Goldman Sachs. He worked for a company that was sidelined to it. So they didn't dig too deep in it. And, and again, wasn't really a reason to look into it on the Democratic side, the question is why Republicans didn't vet their dude. Uh, just like Elizabeth Warren, it tells the woke uh, business about her identity. She's still there. Uh yeah, but she didn't lie about any of her material qualifications for the job. And she's like one six, one sixteen hundredth Native American, whatever. And, and she, she actually believed what her family told her, and she took a DNA test thinking the number would be higher and it was way lower. Who cares? She believed it. She wasn't lying. She had just been told that by her entire family. Ultimately, though, she worked where she said she worked. She did the job she, she said she did. She got a diploma from the university she said she went to, and she didn't lie about her parents dying in 9-11. Uh, Joe Biden, on and on and on, you can go with this list. What is Joe Biden uh, ended his first presidential run because of this shit, learned his lesson and moved forward. And again, these are the people who are mad that people f are getting kicked off Twitter for 10 year old tweets or getting canceled for 10 year old tweets. And yet that's where they're going. It say that if you say and also, again, if 
uh, if you want to argue that Biden shouldn't have been even allowed to run for president, why aren't you kicking this dude to the curb immediately right now for worse and more egregious lies? The right kind of lies. No one's going to bother to check you. If, on the other hand, on the Republican side, he'd said, well, he was a he was a right wing fundamentalist. He belonged to Jerry Falwell's old church or what have you. You can bet they would have pounced on him. Uh, I just. What are you talking about? He was a MAGA Republican. None of them would have pounced on that he was lying about being a member of Jerry Falwell's fucking church. I just find it curious as to how this is being handled. Mark. Um, I find it curious how you guys, you think the answer to it is to call the Democrats out for not handling your fucking problems. How much does Republicans slim majority when they take control of the House on Tuesday play into the amount of pressure Santos is going to feel for stepping down. I mean, they have a very slim majority. They really need every vote. Uh-huh. So does Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, but I don't know what kind of a vote it is. See, the, I don't think this is really about George Santos, and that's a good point. It's not about George Santos, per se. George Santos, as you said, lied about his ancestry, his career, his education. But his job, where his mom died, his uh, his cancer, I think, is the newest one. But I don't care. He's the latest liar on the stage. He's a young version of Joe Biden. The He's a Republican MAGA Trump supporter. What are you talking about? The thing is, is that he has an R after his name. If he were to have a D after his name, nobody would care because a lot. A resume in question. Attended Brew College, attended NYU, worked for Goldman Sachs, worked for Citigroup, owns family firm, the developer organization, a real estate portfolio with 13 properties, none of which is true. Also, where does money come from? That's, by the way, the one thing they're avoiding with all of this is that these are just, these are just embellishments of his resume. The, the reality is, is that he got weird financial dumps of money, one of which is linked to a Russian oligarch that's going to be under scrutiny, especially in his district and in New York State. That's going to get him in major trouble. That this stuff is going to there. It's one of the reasons why they're hammering this stuff, so you almost forget about the the campaign finance finance shit. Is the new black, and whoa, what? After his name, nobody would care because lying is the new black. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. And so. When you think about yeah i i understand why you paused right after you said that when how do i dig my fucking way out of this one jesus christ csl this dude about uh what he represents it's the deterioration of america america it's your fucking party dumb fuck there's first of all there's one of these motherfuckers like and this guy is so over the top. This isn't even like a single embellishment that any one individual campaign has done over the years. Um, bone spurs um, <laughs> or I'm a billionaire, whatever. <clears throat> this is this dude is an, a, like it's a flood of bullshit. Everything about this asshole is turning out to be fake. And it's a Republican. Why is it the rest of the country's fault? Why is America now a population of liars and con artists because of this motherfucker in your party? How, how is that our fault? Where lying has become the new norm, as I said. No, you said it was the new black, which is... Uh, I would I would suggest in the Republican Party, black is not the norm. <laughs> so uh, you just lied. He just lied to us. He didn't. He just said something and then said he said something else. That's a lie. Just for the record, in case anybody's keeping score. In uh, on Twitter, pre Elon Musk, if you told the truth, you got penalized. So, uh, like what? <laughs> Hydroxychloroquine. Americans have been conditioned to not only shut their mouths, but to accept lies. We have? How? Uh, hold on, somebody's, one, give me one second.
Somebody rang my bell. Hang on one second. Hi everybody, I, we got a package and I, I had to sign for it. So, uh, thank God I heard the, um, Summer's not here, so thank God I heard the bell. All right, um, I upgraded her phone for Christmas, so they, they mailed it to the house. All right, anyways, yay. All right, I'm back. Anyways, where were we? Oh yeah, these assholes. Somehow, um, the, the, the fact that Republicans um, elected a habitual liar, a pathological liar, is the fault of Democrats and the American people for being suckers and assholes. And if you want to look at the root of the problem, and I blame Republicans for allowing this to happen. Oh, good. But if you want to solve any problem, you have to go to the root of it. And the root is Elon Musk, captain full of shit, liar. I mean, but I mean, in, in, in defense of... Uh, Elon Musk, I suppose, um, we do have Teslas that are available to be, you know, autonomous taxis. And you're, anybody who owns a Tesla in the audience is de definitely making 30K a year with their auto Uber, right? I mean, that was supposed to start in 2017. It's way past then. And the root of this problem is in the schools from K, what? K through graduate school. These kids are taught lies all day. What? Day long. Girls are boys, boys are girls. The fuck? <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> so, so Santos is was taught to be gay in school? The I don't know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, and that's why Republicans voted for a liar. And become because america has become more secular over time it's become more immoral you have parents taking their wait a minute america's immoral because you guys elected someone who was gay who may have been lying about their previous relationships with a woman that they were married to for a long time the fuck kids to drag queen story out and they're mutilating children jesus christ so, so what is acceptable today uh, was not acceptable in the past. In 1987, Joe Biden was running for president again. And, and he lost because he was caught plagiarizing elements of his speech and exaggerating his record. Right. He lost. He was not elected. He lost the primary. Democrats rejected him. Quite frankly, if he hadn't done those two things, he'd have been president. He would have beat Dukakis. And he stole Neil Kinnock's speech. And then it was discovered, and he was criticized for that, and that derailed his speech. And Johnny... Right. Yes. We Democrats learned a lesson. Don't do that. Apparently, Republicans were like, well, if, I mean, if you just told people to fuck off, why don't you just do that? Why don't they go, if they say you're, you stole that, you can go, no, I didn't. Fuck you. That's what they voted for with Trump. These are the motherfuckers that elected Donald Trump. Carson on his monologue on The Tonight Show even mocked Joe Biden for it. Right. And he lost the primary because of it. He bowed out. That's how it's supposed to work. It doesn't mean people can't recover from stuff. It doesn't mean you can't learn your fucking lesson. I guess unless you're a Republican. Today, nobody would care. Again, if Santos were a Democrat, this wouldn't even be news. Uh, well, yeah, it would, because why would we have elected a MAGA Trump fan? Um, I guess we don't even know where he went to school, uh, really, to your point about blaming the schools. Uh he said K through 12. We mean, uh, we presume he went to high school. Uh, look, Jeff, you know, when it comes to earning America. Again, I don't know. This dude is just grasping at straws. They are trying so fucking hard to run interference for this dude. America's trust, right? Americans trust. They want to be able to to understand that the politician who says they went to the school actually did, that they have. Oh, really? Uh, Trump's star athlete status, his, uh, um, the fact that he was top of his class at Horton, 
have work experience working at a company that they actually worked there. What does this mean for Republicans going forward in selecting really ideal and honorable people to represent? <laughs> yeah, no, they, that's not going to. You do realize you guys are pushing for Trump to run again. And DeSantis, if you can't have him, you're kidding, right? Said Americans. Well, it, it, it means that they need to really investigate people who are going to who are asking them for their vote to check up on them, to check up on their background and resume. I mean, we have all been around people running for office and they say, I stand for X or I went to school here or there. You need to check on this. The media <laughs> You think? Why wasn't this a, a concern before the primary, Jeff? Media needs to check on this. Don't just give them a pass and let them go or you will get <laughs> Really? So, so you're saying uh, Trump's not qualified to run in 2024. Good. Get okay. into this kind of situation that we've seen. And, you know, Mark mentioned Joe Biden in 1987. I played a role in that. I was a big Bobby Kennedy fan when I was a kid, memorized all his speeches. In 1987, I was in the Reagan political office, heard him deliver a speech on C-SPAN, and I was getting to the end of his speeches, his sentences before he was. So I picked up the phone, called the New York Times. Oh, my God, that mustache. Maureen Dowd was the reporter there at the time. Two days later, they ran a front page story. They quoted me uh, a, a few days after that. He was out of the race. There were other right. That's how Democrats work, fucko. This is not working out for you. This is not this is not supporting your premise. Other incidents started to come to light. So you've got to be willing to to speak up when you know something like this and say it and do something. And meanwhile, the dude next to him is like, leave him in. Who gives a shit? You're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Thanks. Hi. Welcome. How are you?